Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Springs Church. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here at the Springs. Thank you so much for coming today. We are excited to get into the Word together with you. In fact, we've been stu- studying a, uh, a, a topic called baggage. Everybody say baggage. Okay, we've been, we've been studying about how important it is because we have this, this conviction, this, this core belief that God wants us to live free. He wants us to be free people, and he wants us to be able to travel this journey of life not weighed down, not burdened down by the things of this world, by the cares of this world, by the things that the enemy would try to do to our lives. But no, God wants us to live free and learn to travel light. But not all baggage, think about this with me this morning, not all baggage comes from things like wounds of the past or unfulfilled expectations or untreated pain or even unrepented sin. Listen, some baggage, this is what we're going to talk about today, some of the baggage that we accumulate and that we carry around in this life, it it simply comes from an overwhelming, stressful lifestyle. Say that with me. An overwhelming, stressful lifestyle. Today, over the next few minutes, I just want you to think about your life. I want you to think about your pace of life. And are you stressed out? Have you ever been stressed out? Have you ever been overloaded by the things of this world? Have you ever come to the place where you're just kind of burnt out? And you're ready to give up? Well, if if you're in that place or you've ever been in that place or you know somebody in that place today, I want you to really lean in and listen to what the Word of God is going to tell us today. We've been looking at a theme verse in Hebrews chapter 12. And it's this. Look at this with me. It's up on your screen if you'd like to follow along. Also, grab your message notes if you want to take notes with me. It says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. look Look at these next few words. Let us throw off everything that hinders. Let us throw off everything that hinders. And the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with, what? Perseverance, the race. Everybody say race. Race. Did you know that you're in a race? Jesus said, you are called to run a race. Each one of us has a race, and we're called to run that race free and light in perseverance. So it says this, let us run the race that has been marked out for us. And look at these next words. These next few words, this is what we talked about last week. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Wait, wait, wait. Did it say fixing our eyes on the TV? Fixing our eyes on what Hollywood's given to us? Fixing our eyes on the newspaper? Okay, fixing our eyes on CNN and Fox News and all of that good stuff. No, what did it say? Fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Today's big idea, what I want you to really think about and grasp this morning is this. The, the issue of being stressed out, burnt out, and simply overloaded can, can really be a heavy baggage in our lives. And it can feel like we're carrying around just a, a thousand pounds of dead weight. And what we need to do is apply the word of God. To that issue right there. Anybody ready to apply God's word this morning? Okay, so for me, I'll just be honest with you. I've experienced times in my life of crazy heavy stress, especially in the ministry, especially in any kind of leadership. You know what it feels like to have this burden of stress and pressure and tension in your life. And it it just feels like heavy Wait, like I, I want to I wanna live free, I want to travel light, but, but all of this stuff has, has weighed me down. I don't know if you've ever felt like that before, but I certainly have. And, and to be honest with you, sick, stress is rough. 
It really is rough. Stress can, can wreak havoc on our emotional well-being. And stress can wreak havoc and, and burden us even physically. It reduces our ability to even think clearly and function effectively. And it, it causes us to not to enjoy life. And my goodness, God wants us to enjoy this life. How many lives do we get? Okay, how many, how many lives do we get? One. Okay, do you think God wants us to be miserable in that life? No, he wants us to live free and to travel light. But stress can cause lots of, I think about my own life, stress has caused lots of arguments, lots of fights with my wife. Hello, anybody fight with your spouse? Okay, stress can, can cause you to lose sleep at night. Anybody ever had trouble sleeping? It has caused me to feel to, to be on, on medicine before, just being vulnerable with you. It has caused me to feel uh, just discouraged and, and even depressed and uh, even hopeless at times, like there is no way to get out of this. Stress can make us sick. I mean, physically, emotionally. Stress, the research says that stress can lead to many kinds of illnesses, like Heart disease and headache and high blood pressure, stomach spasms, ulcers, um, uh, hypertension, muscle cramps. Can anybody relate? Stress can literally kill us. It's a, it's a problem. Stress can actually lead to emotional issues as well. As well. And stress can, can lead to, to feelings of just being bound by worry and anger and bitterness and resentfulness. And it can cause a person to actually lose the joy that God wants us to experience in this life. Stress can also make a person extremely negative. Have you ever known any negative people? Okay, I know there's none in this room, but, but we want to pray for all the negative people because they may be stressed out, overly critical. It keeps us, stress can keep us from, from faith, from living in faith and living in peace and living in the rest that is in Jesus. It can produce doubt. In our lives, I read somewhere uh, the other day that uh, a, a few years ago, Americans consume. This blew my mind. Americans consume 4.5 million pounds of aspirin a year. Wow, that was a few years ago. I wonder what it is now. But we we have pills to help us sleep, right? We have pills to, to like, like caffeine drinks to wake us up and to get us through the day. We have these five-hour energy drinks to keep us going. And then we have more pills to help us calm down and relax and take the edge off a little bit. And, and, and I'm not against uh, pills and, and, and having doctors that help us out. But, but there's an issue here. There's a deeper issue here. That is related to why are we so stressed out? Okay? So I want us to think about that for the next few moments because it's a, it's a problem. And I'll just I'll say it this way. I put this up on the screen. I want you to really think about this. If Satan cannot get us to be bad, he'll work overtime to get us overly busy, stressed out, distracted, and weighed down with the baggage of this world. Is that true? He works really, really hard. And I think all of us in the room, everyone who's listening, everyone who's watching this on YouTube, I think we can all relate to the heavy baggage that is stress. Here's one, a one-sentence sentiment that Job shared. And I think we could probably relate to all this. But he said this in Job chapter 9, verse 25. He said, my days go by faster than a runner. Everybody say runner. runner. I'm going to build on this idea as we go through the message today. My days are going fast. They're flying by. Fast paced. Lots of activity. Lots of things to think about, to do. I might, you should see my to-do list. Boom, 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 boom. And it is not just a daily list. Like I got a list for a whole year of things to do. Come on. So we are busy. Our days are going by like a, like a runner. Faster 
than a runner. And he goes on to say, they fly away without my seeing any joy. Where's the joy? Boy, things are happening. I'm doing a lot of activities. But where'd the joy go? Even in church, it becomes a, I have to. It becomes an obligation rather than, woo, I get to. I get to give. I get to serve. I get to play the guitar. I get to sing. I get to share the word of God. It's a, it's a difference, and we, and we become so... Uh, there you go. We, thank you for that. I appreciate the help. Our, our activity, listen, our physical activity... And our pace of life, it's it's beginning to take a a, a toll on our our soul's condition. And we find ourselves just doing all the right things, maybe on the outside, but yet on the inside, we're messed up. We got issues. We need to work through some stuff, right? Right? We're, in, we're empty, we're dry, we're, we're needy on the inside. Lots going on where, where it's public, but when those lights go down and you're all alone, it's a different story. And we're stressed out. And so God really wants us to learn to live free and to travel light. And so what are the biblical principles? What are the, what are the truths we really need to believe in order to see that happen in our lives, in order for God to take us from where we are now to where he wants us to be, what do we have to believe? What do we have to know and have a conviction for? Number, number one, jot this down if you're taking notes. It, if we want to really travel light, we have to believe that it is better to have less of what doesn't matter and more of what does Think about this. Some of us, that sounds really great, but you know what? We don't believe it. (laughs) And we don't live it. And think about this. We are convinced that more always has to be better. Right? It's not true, but listen. If one dollar is good, two dollars is If one donut from Krispy Kreme is good, then two donuts are... (laughs) If one car is good, then two cars are... If one kid is good, then two kids are... Oh, okay, okay. (laughs) Somehow I heard all the parents start groaning, you know. Okay, if one wife is good, then two wives is just wrong, okay? It's just wrong, all right. (laughs) Look at this verse in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 6. It says this. This is so good, so powerful, guys. Better one handful with what? tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Sometimes, guys, less is more. (laughs) We have to believe that. Number two is this. If we want to really learn to travel light, we we have to know that uh, it is better to live by design rather than default. That's good. Okay? Now, we've all been designed to run a focused Christian life according to the truth of God's word and according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we're not called to run our neighbor's race. Right? We don't want to fall into the trap of comparing ourselves with ourselves. I'm not called to run your race. You're not called to run my race. But here's the amazing part of it all. Is that there is a God-given lane for us to run in. 
Now, there is a God-given lane for you to run in. Now, think about this. Your lane that you run is where you are most effective. It's where you are gifted. It's where you are most passionate. Your lane is where God has specifically called you. You're not called to, do, to run everybody else's race and be in everybody else's lane. You are specifically designed and wired in a certain way. And that is the lane that God has called you to be into. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't ever allow God to stretch you. It doesn't mean that you never allow God to, to uh, do something out of the ordinary with you. No, but what it does mean is that you have a divinely designed, specific, personal purpose. And I just say it like this. If you've been around our church at all, you've probably heard me say this a million times. But you have been made on purpose for a purpose. You have been made on purpose for a purpose. Now, think, think about this. A lot, of, a lot of us do this. We're like, think about just like an like a energy ball. Okay, this is, our li- this is our lives. And what we do sometimes is that, is that all of our attention, our energy, goes all kinds of different ways. People pull us this way. We think we should live up to other people's expectations and we're pulled this way. We really like this way. The devil tries to pull us this way. We carry baggage this way. And so here's our life and we are pulled and we try to go every which way. But here's what God wants us to do is to take those arrows that are going everywhere and make them go, make them in alignment. Make them be one long arrow where your life is focused and you are able to stay in your lane according to your design, according to how God has wired you specifically. We need to be focused and going in one direction. Because think about this, if you, don't, if you don't prioritize your life, somebody else will. What's important to you? What has God given you? If you don't prioritize it and begin to live that out, you'll be going like this instead of like that. Prioritize your life because when you discover your God-given purpose, you will realize that your unique design is important. And you will understand the joy of this truth right here, what it says in Psalm 139, verse 16. All the days, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God has a plan for you. He has a plan for you specifically. Number three is this. If we, if we really want to travel light, we're going to have to believe that it is better to get the right things done, not just more things done. In other words, I'm going to live on purpose. I'm going to live intentionally. Everybody say that word with me intentionally. I'm going to do things on purpose because I was made on purpose for a purpose. I'm going to have a plan. And my plan is not to just be busy with with anything and everything. No, my plan is to be busy about the right things. My plan is to be busy about my father's business. My plan is to discover my unique purpose and to make intentional steps to live that out. I'm going to be intentional about that. I'm not just going to do anything or more things. No, I'm going to do the right things. Now, remember, we're talking about stress. We're talking about how to, how to combat this with the word of God. We have to believe these biblical truths 
we have to start there. Okay? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17, it says, An intelligent person aims at wise action, but a fool starts off in many directions. Okay? How many of us want to be fools? How many of us want to be intelligent people? Right. Let's, let's do wise action. Let's live our lives by design, not by default. Let's think about what are the right things that I need to be doing, not just more things I need to be doing. Okay? Now, let's transition a little bit because those are the core, those are some, a few of the core beliefs, the biblical principles that we have to believe that have to be a core part of our everyday life. Thinking and operating, okay? But now there are beliefs, but now there are practices, okay? I'm going to get really practical here in the next few minutes. I'm going to share with you just some practical things. How can we avoid stress? Not not avoid stress. I mean, it's inevitable. But how can we live our lives in a way that we're not overloaded with it, that we are really living free and traveling light. How can I run my race? This is the question I have to ask. How can I run my race effectively without being weighed down by excessive baggage of busyness and overwhelming stress? Number one thing I would tell you is regularly take inventory. <clears throat> In other words, stop and evaluate. Think about your life. Just getting really, really practical here for the next few moments. Stop and evaluate. One of the things that Ashley and I do, we have, we have two uh, dates, you could say, every week. Okay, One, we have a fun date, which um, serious talk is off limits. Okay? We go and we just have fun, all right? But then we have a second date, and it's called a, we just call it a working date, okay? A working date together where we have each other's individual uh, attention, and we talk about things like our calendar, what are we doing this week, what things are coming up. Uh, We talk about the big issues in our marriage like communication, money, sex. We talk about those things and we get on the same page together. And one of the things that we also talk about and we ask this question together is this. Are we in the right activities? Okay. Am I I, and are you, are we together doing the right things? It's important just to take a few moments and not just live without thinking about how you're living. But stop and evaluate and ask yourself and ask your spouse, are we involved in the right activities? Stop and think about that. Um, And we pray together and we pray a prayer like this. This is up on the screen and in your notes. Psalm 39. We pray a prayer like this. Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away. My life is no longer than the width of my hand. An entire lifetime is just a moment to you. Human existence is like a breath. In the book of James, he calls our life like like a vapor, like a mist. It's there and then it's gone. So we have to think about And take time to stop and evaluate. Am I doing the right things? A while back, a few years ago, I was really in a dark place. uh, Dealing with depression. Dealing with uh, just overwhelming stress and anxiety. And I read this book by a pastor named Wayne Cordero. It's called Leading, Leading on Empty. Awesome book. But Wayne talked about a time in his life and in his ministry how he was just completely burnt out and he was he he was mad at God and he didn't like the people in his church and he was just frustrated and wanted to quit 
And he said one of the things that he did that made the biggest difference was that he learned to do this right here, to regularly take inventory. In other words, how am I doing in life? And he looked at all these things. He looked at 12, 12 areas. Go ahead and put that slide up of the uh, different areas of life. And he said, look at each of these areas in your life and just give yourself a grade. And he said, why don't you do this at least once a month? How's, how's your faith? How's your marriage? How's your family? How's your work, your job? How's your technology use? How's your, how's your ministry? By the way, each one of you are in ministry. If you are a born-again Christian, you are in ministry, not just those of us who minister from the pulpit. He says, how's your social life? How's your attitude? How's your, your finances? How's your creativity? How's your physical well-being? How's your, how's your travel? So look at these areas of your life and ask yourself, how am I doing? How am I doing? Regularly take inventory. Number two thing, not only that, but number two, it's going to lead us sometimes to make tough decisions. Sometimes we're going to have to cut things out. When we take inventory, we're just going to be like, no, what's my best yes? What is my best yes? There are lots of great things to be involved in. There are lots of great pursuits to put my resources into. But what is my best yes? And what things do I need to say no to? If you're, if you're like me and like a lot of people, we don't like to say no. Right? We like, we like to please people. We like to keep everybody happy. We like to do, we like to keep the peace and don't ruffle feathers and just say yes to everything and everyone, right? But here's, here's the truth of it. When, when you learn to say no, you're going to trade popularity for respect. Think about this. Learning to say no is powerful. And sometimes, as you inventory your life, God will lead you to say no to something. And sometimes you have to make a tough decision in order to do that. Psalm 90, verse 12 says this, Teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Now, look at this next phrase right here. Help us to spend them as we should. That has to be our regular prayer. So we take inventory, take regular inventory. Sometimes God will speak to us and we need to make some tough decisions about what to say no to, what to stop doing in our lives. And then number three is this, focus on what matters most. Focus on what matters most. In the New Testament, uh, Jesus spoke a powerful sermon, a, a wonderful message about stress and worry and, uh, and all of these things. And he provided a summary sentence. It was in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And he summed it all up with these words right here. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things that you're concerned about will be added unto you. But in, in other words, he says, your priorities are important. And he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first. The order is important. The priority is crucial. It's what Jesus taught us right here. Focus on what matters most. So what does matter most? Let me give you three things. Number one, God matters. God matters. In Luke chapter 12, uh, verse 15, look at what it says. Then, then Jesus said to them, watch out and be on your guard against all kinds of greed because a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. In other words, 
all of these external things that we do sometimes to, to make money, to uh, get higher status or position or things that we busy ourselves with that, are think, that we think are important are not actually as important as we think they are. Your life does not consist in all the things that you have. Friends, your life consists in Jesus. Your life doesn't come from what's in your bank account. Your life doesn't come from what kind of car you drive or what kind of house you live in or any of that. No, the life that you have, the life that you experience comes because of your relationship with your creator God and your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you have to ask yourself, am I getting life from him or am I, getting, am I trying to get this pseudo life from somewhere else? God is important. Later on in that uh, same chapter in Luke 12, Jesus says, uh, he, he teaches a parable about the rich fool in this encounter. And, and one, one guy responded, and he's, he's just kind of like, yeah, my life consists of all the things that I have and all the things that I'm doing outwardly. And Jesus responded, and this is in verse 20 and 21. Look at what, how God said. He said, but God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. And so the, one of the things that matters is this, guys. God matters. And being rich toward God is the most important thing. That we can do. Being rich toward God. The most important thing in our lives is not just to have God on our list. But God wants to be first on our list. He wants to be the center of our, of our, of our lives. He doesn't want to just be a part of our lives. He wants to be our lives. God matters. The Apostle Paul said it this way in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. He said, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to what? To the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Wow. To Paul, Knowing Christ, having a relationship with God was the most important thing to him. And it should be to us as well. Amen? You guys still following with me? Okay, he goes on to say, I, for whose sake have I have lost all things, I consider them trash. Why? That I may gain Christ. Not only does God matter, but number two, the thing I would share with you is this, the kingdom matters. The kingdom of God matters. This is why that I believe that we should be giving all that we can give into the kingdom. This is why we should be praying all that we can pray. It's for the advancement of the kingdom. It's why we should be serving, not because we have to or we feel an obligation. No, because we get to and because it's for the sake of the kingdom. This is why we want to direct all of our, our finances, all of our energies, all of our plans to the goal of reaching as many people as we can with the life-giving message of Jesus Christ. That's the mission of our church. I can't think of a mission any greater than that. This is why the kingdom of God is so important. And to tell you the truth, this is what I'm giving my life to. 
This is what I've committed. This is what many of you have been giving your lives to as well. The kingdom of God. Why? Because this is God's heart. This is what's important to him. This is valuable to him. He wants every single person to come to repentance and a saving knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. This is his heart, and this is our heart at our, at our church. If you're wondering if maybe this is your first time here or second or third time here, and you're wondering, what kind of church is this? We are a church. We want to be kingdom-minded. We want to be kingdom-focused. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we want to help populate heaven and plunder hell. We want to help. This is our heart in every weekend service. This is our heart in every life group. This is our heart in every growth track class. This is our heart through every member of our dream team is this. We want people to know God. We want people to discover freedom. We want people to know about their God-given purpose. And we want people to make a difference. Why? For the kingdom. For the kingdom of God. So God matters. The kingdom matters. And lastly, people matter. People matter to God. And so they matter to us. Galatians chapter 5, Paul said this. This is so powerful. Serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Look at this. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by one another. Most important thing, what he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Listen, we're a church that gathers joyfully and with celebration on a Sunday morning. But guess what? It doesn't stop there. We want to be a church that is about life groups. Hello? Can I give you my life group plug really quick? Okay. Life groups are the heartbeat of this church. We want to grow larger and smaller at the same time. Amen? Amen. We want to grow. We, this is why I'm super beyond excited to start this new semester of life groups. They're so important. They're so important because why? People are important. And people need places to connect. And people need pla safe places to grow and to learn and to study the Bible together and to pray together and to support one another. And to be honest with you, the small, the small group thing, this, this ministry called Life Groups is not an appendage. It's not, a, it's not just something we tacked on at the end. We thought it would be a good idea. No, the small groups is our heartbeat. It's the central part. Of what we want to do. So I encourage you, if you're if you're just coming on Sunday morning, boy, I am glad that you're here, but you're not getting all that this church has to offer. Get involved in a group. There's only so much discipleship that can happen in a setting like this, right? Disciples are best made in circles, not rows. Okay, let's get on. Let's get on board with this life group thing. Okay, there's only so much growing we can do by looking at the head of the person in front of you and listening to a preacher talk to you for a few minutes. You need to be in a place where you can look people in the eye. You can learn people's names. You can say, this is what I'm struggling with and this is what I need help with. And I've got questions about this. Can we talk about this? Can you pray with me? I'm really going through a storm. You need to be in a group. Somebody once said, the more 
isolated and disconnected we are, the more shattered and distorted our self-identity. Think about this. We are not healthy when we're alone. We we find ourselves when we connect to others. Real life change happens best in the context of small community. And life groups provide us that small community. Let me leave you with this scripture. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. It says this, a person standing alone, look at this, can be attacked and defeated. But two, when you get together with somebody else, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. For there is power in community, in connecting with your brothers and sisters in Christ, and being together on mission to grow closer to God and to grow closer to one another. Amen? Amen. So we focus on what matters the most. God matters. The kingdom matters. And people matter. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to have a simple prayer, and we're going to end the service a little bit differently than we usually do. So, Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the power of your truth. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to live our lives overloaded and stressed out, but God, we thank you for the truth of your word that sets us free. We thank you, Lord, for the strength that you're now giving us to focus on the things that really matter the most. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said.